How does a robot milk a cow? Let's show you guys the whole process from start to finish. So this is cow 837. First thing we're going to do is get her teats cleaned off. So here you can see the arm swinging in. Now her right rear teat actually is a blind quarter. It doesn't give any milk. So we told the computer that. So the robot is not going to milk that right rear teat. You can see how the brushes move sideways a little bit. The arm moves sideways to clean off the teat ends. We're going to hit each teat one more time. We're going to get the brushes out of the way. So the laser is scanning for the teeth so it can, so it can hook up the teacups. There it needs to move back a little bit. There, it found that one. And again, that right rear quarter is just going to hang out because that quarter does not produce milk. After that cow has all of her quarters attached, these brushes will wash off before the next cow comes in so they have time to dry. These robots can detect mastitis, they can detect abnormalities in the milk. What is going on is as the milk goes out of the udder, through the teacup, and through a milk hose, each teacup has its own hose that it travels through. And as it travels through that hose, there's an infrared laser shining through that milk tube. That laser is detecting milk quality by looking for consistency, temperature, and color. It's also looking for milk flow. So as the milk from the quarter starts to slow down, meaning she's almost done being milked, that laser detects that milk flow and it'll actually pull each quarter off as each quarter is done. That is one really unique advantage of robot milking. Here's what her screen looks like. So again, right rear quarter, no milk. But you can see here's how much milk she's going to give, or how much milk she has given so far out of each quarter. And then here's how much milk it predicts her to give in this milking. She's also getting two different kinds of feed. She's getting corn gluten pellet and a texture that we call the high cow feed. She's getting 1.7 pounds of the gluten pellet and 1.3 pounds of the textured feed. She'll be in here for just about six and a half minutes, just over. You can see there she is, eating her pellet. She's got her head up right now. Always enjoyed the sounds of the pulsators. There, one quarter came off, saying that that quarter is done produce or done with the milk for right now. So it sensed that milk flow and pulled that teacup off. The milk is collected in this milk jar and once the cow is done, it'll pump the whole jar over into our big storage tank. There, one more quarter just came off. So you can see we gave five and a half pounds, almost 13, 12 pounds. We'll see how much this one ends up with if we're going to get close to what the robot estimated. After all the quarters are done, it's going to administer a spray on the teats. There the laser's looking for the teeth and it's administering a post dip. Between cows, it comes over here for a really quick rinse of the cups before the next one begins. And here comes our next cow. The robot knows who each cow is by picking up their RFID by that black box. So the RFID is what is on the side of 7103's collar right here. So that's a radio frequency identification device. So that is telling the robot who this cow is and whether or not she can be milked. So each cow can be milked a certain amount of times a day. So sometimes you'll see a cow that'll come in and walk right out, meaning that she got milked too recently and the robot put passes her through so she doesn't get milked again. Here we have 445 waiting in line. Over here we have 7103 waiting in line for that robot. And there you can see some of their treat that they get to eat. Sorry, I'll back up. Go ahead, eat your treat. This is the cow that was getting milk while I was outside showing you guys what the outsides of the robot looks like. So there you can see the green spray going on. The robot swings aside to go get a quick rinse before the next cow comes in. You can see 7103 there is a little bit impatient. She wants to come in pretty bad. So the front gate of the robot just opened. Out goes one. In comes the next. Same process as before, we swing the brushes under, 
There they go. I'm going to sit back here just because they're not used to me being all, being all up in their space when I'm up close to them like that. What the brushing also does is help stimulate the release of oxytocin, which means they help let their milk down. All right, the brushes swing out of the way. And here the lasers are going to find the teats. Oh, we almost missed that one, but we got it. There we go. She's just up front, chilling, eating her treat. Oh, and I know someone's gonna ask. No, these brushes do not hurt at all. They should kick on here in a minute and I'll show you. There they go. See, no discomfort at all. And we actually want them to be a little bit stiff. We want them to stimulate that teeth so that it encourages oxytocin let down. But you also have to keep in mind, a calf's tongue feels a lot like sandpaper. So these brushes are incredibly more comfortable than say like a calf would be. And so that noise you hear under here, you can hear that. I mentioned earlier, that's called a pulsator. There's a little piston in there and it's moving up and down, up and down, up and down, transferring vacuum, no vacuum, vacuum, no vacuum into that liner which is right here, and inside of that liner is this rubber, uh, inside of this white shell is this red liner, and it's causing that red liner to open and collapse, open and collapse, and that is what helps massage milk out of the teeth. What helps draw these cows up to the robots is two things. One is they really like the pellet. The treat that they get at these robots is that corn gluten pellet and that texture feed, and cows just go nuts over that stuff. There have been farms that have tried other feed types that maybe have been cheaper, easier to come by, etc., and cows just the visits that the cows went to the robots went way down. So it's important that we have a good feed that cows like up there. And there is something to be said about when a cow's udder does feel a little bit full or tight that they do want to come get milk. But you've, you've seen people on my page probably say, well, they only come get milk because they're in so much pain, they have to relieve themselves. That has nothing to do with it. If cows did not like that treat at that robot or if what was at this robot was an unpleasant experience, they wouldn't get milk. They would sit there, let their udder be full of milk, and just continue on being a cow. So we do this in such a way that the cows like visiting the robot, they like their treat, and it's an enjoyable experience because of the way we have it all set up. We have rubber matting on the floor, which encourages good footing for them to come visit. We have a good treat at the robot, which means they enjoy their time in there, and we milk them out in such a way that is gentle, complete, and done quickly. I think that about covers how robots milk cows.